Can you remember when your where you got your first interest uh, interest in photography? Where did that come from? Yes, um, uh, I was in Yugoslavia in 1947, and we weren't allowed to fraternize with the natives, and I didn't drink or smoke, and I was bored stiff, so I wrote to the air ministry and asked them for some photographic materials, film, uh, paper and processing uh, chemicals. And that's where I started. And what was the basis of your request? I mean, did you say, did you say what it was for? I, I explained that, that uh, because we weren't allowed to fraternise uh, and if you went to the cinema, it was all in Serbo-Croat or you couldn't understand. So I had nothing to do. Mm-hmm. And out of boredom, I... Yeah. And, uh, and, I was, and you obviously had a camera then, you asked for the material, a, so what I, did you have? I had uh, a retina, a codec retina, 35mm. Yeah, that's the fold away type The little fold, uh, yeah. a small bellows. And that's uh, how I started. And uh, I used to photograph the graves when, when we interred the bodies right. and erected the cross at, uh, just to show the name of the air crew, right. the airman or woman, to make sure that the parents knew where their son or daughter was. Right. Not some of them thought that they may be walking around with amnesia or yes. maybe taken prisoner of war. Yes. But this yeah. would prove beyond all doubt yeah. that this is where your son or daughter is buried. Mm. <clears throat> After mm. identifying the the body or the aircraft. Yeah. What was the name of your detachment? What were you? The British, the war graves, the searcher party. A number one searcher party, the British War Graves. Yeah. And what territories did you cover? Uh, we covered Italy, we covered Sicily, we covered Austria, Germany, France, uh, Yugoslavia, Albania, bordering on Romania, uh, into the in Greek border, into the Cernogor, the, the Black Mountains in Yugoslavia, southern Yugoslavia. And uh, how long was that? Was that long, what period three, of time? Three years. Right. Three years. And um, what information did you have to go on to recover bodies? And uh, well, we'd have a uh, um, documentation, uh, maybe the wing, the wing, wing commander would say the aircraft is in flames over Cernogora or Ljubljana. Last seen in flames in Ljubljana, heading south. So we go to that area and knock on doors, farmers, houses, trying to locate where the plane crashed. And mm-hmm. we eventually come across the the farmer. Say he crashed in the, that field there, and we buried him just in the corner of the field. And just dig him up. Right. and identify him from his tags, his yeah. dog tags. Would they always have tags? Would that do? Most of them had tags. Right. Because they had waterproof plus fireproof tags. Each right. one had waterproof plus fireproof tags. Yeah. Uh, some, some, sometimes in Sicily, sometimes the farmers would feed them to the dogs. Really? Or sometimes they would survive, They'd come down by parachute and be shot. In Yugoslavia, that happened quite a few times. And then we'd see the hole in the head. And we just hand that over to the war crimes tribunal. They'd look after that. Mm. Um, the condition, most condition, they we're talking about a skeletal condition, totally. Uh, yeah, skeletal, because they, they were buried naked or, or just clothes, yeah. no covering whatsoever, not like being in a coffin. So they, so they, they deteriorate rotten. very fast? Yes, very fast. 
it only held bones and little bits of skin. Except when uh, they were above the snow line. Yes. Then you would have bodies. Yeah. Uh, the likes of Mount Etna in, in Sicily. We had a, an aircraft that crashed at the top of the mountain and the bodies were in the plane. What condition? Well, they were ready, ready to fall asunder, but, but the, they're still quite preserved. So then we had to get them back down the mountain. On that particular time, the mountain actually erupted six hours after we came down. But the lava was flowing down the mountain six hours after we came down. Mm. We were in Catania at the time at the base of the mountain. And um, I think you mentioned an incident that it was upsetting to see the RAF, the RAF. Uh, oh yes, yes, that, that was, that was at the, on the Greek border, that was in the Black Mountains. Uh, were 14 women in a troop carrier and when we opened the grave it was waterlogged and they were floating. I found that very disturbing very upsetting. The fact that there were females, it, it was it was the worst time, the worst few days of my life. Mm-hmm. And we couldn't go by road, we had to use horses because the roads were so narrow. It was only a couple of feet wide in the mountains, just on the Greek border. Mm. So that, that was the and would they all those bodies have to be brought back? Yes, we put them in blankets. Right, so you'd have and, to lift them out. Yeah, of lift them out uh, and uh, put them in blankets. Uh, and we had an ambulance. I used to drive an ambulance. It was an empty, an empty ambulance, and just put the bodies in it, bring it back to the capital city, which was Belgrade. Build a cemetery and inter them there. Oh, that was uh, that was the worst few days of my searching. Otherwise, uh, it became important because you were finding sons and daughters and able to prove to the parents that your son or your daughter has been found. And here's the proof. The number of the engines, the plane, his dog tags, her dog tags, any watches or rings or dental uh, um, records, and no doubt about it, this is where your son or daughter is. Here's a photograph of the car. So you, you felt that in some ways you were removing the doubt. Yes, it, it, in, in the first end, few weeks yeah. it was a, a bit sickening. But then it became a pleasure when we were able to find. Yeah. Sometimes it'd take a fortnight to find. Other times you could find it in 48 hours. It would depend. If the plane were on autopilot, it might fly on for another 100 miles. Sometimes it might just crash within 10 miles of where the wingman spotted him. The wing commander. Would would and uh, would would in all cases that would have been impact death by impact. Yes. Yeah. And did you ever wonder why they couldn't parachute out? Did you ever? Some sometimes they parachute out. Sometimes uh, the parachute didn't open, which was referred to as a Roman candle. I mean, just they just hit the ground and put a hole in the ground. Yeah. Quite a few didn't open. Really? Hmm. If it were not properly packed, careless packing, or sometimes they they, they, they bail out and you get caught in the tailplane of the aircraft and go down with it. My goodness. Hmm. And then the the engines usually finished up in the local uh, blacksmith. 
all the plane, the rest of it would be gone. The engines were usually in the, in the local blacksmith shop. But he'd recycle the, the material or what? Uh, I don't know what they did with it. Maybe they'd use it for covering it all. But that was a hell of an experience, the, mm, the, the, wasn't it? It was, yeah, yeah. It was, but it was interesting. We were meeting the people. We were in r- very remote areas and we stayed in their homes. Yeah. So were people well disposed towards you? Yes, yes, yes. In Sicily, in a lot of cases, they let us, some of the houses were so big, they let us put the car in the hall because of theft. They just opened the doors and they drive the car into the hall, park in the hallway. Really? Yeah. And what, what, lawlessness after the war was after the war, everything was scarce. There was no there was no petrol wasn't available. Yes. Yeah. And. You had to immobilise your car. You take take out. We always had to take out the rotor arm. Then, if it was stolen, at least you had the rotor arm. Your job was done. Yeah. But some sometimes you could have spare rotor arms. Flog the flog the rotor arm for a hundred quid. Yeah. <laughs> um. And why, the people that wouldn't be well disposed towards you, why would that be? Was it because they'd be anti-British or what would they? Well, they thought, when they saw us first, they thought we were Germans with the insignia. But no, we had no problem, except that when you went into remote areas, everybody come out to see you and you got fed up Being with the crowd. Being the, the yeah. yes, the bit of the notoriety. Of, yes, yeah. yeah, it was a nuisance. You couldn't go about your business. And the roads yeah. were non existent. It was dirt, dust in, in the summer and muck in the winter. Uh, mostly uh, horse transport and picking up horseshoe nails. You could get 12 punctures a day. Anything from five to twelve punctures a day, because you were picking up horseshoe nails. Were the tires specially designed to cope with that? We had bulletproof, run flat tires, but you'd still you could run for fifty miles or so, but you still had to change it. Change it, and there were sixteen nuts on each wheel. It was quite a job. The huge wheels. Uh, it was a su- the Humber Super Snipe. Uh, Four liter, four wheel drive, equipped with radio. Uh, 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 it was the 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 driving end of it? Was it similar to the super snipe as we know it? Ah uh, no no no, no it wouldn't uh, be as comfortable. But uh, quite a quite a uh, substantial. Uh, yes, very powerful engine and. Uh, Go through muck, no problem. Off road, a lot of times you had to go off roads, or sometimes you had to cross a river. We had the bridge had been blown up, and uh, sometimes I, I had to. It was so steep, I had to reverse. I had to go up the bank in reverse, which is very difficult. Trying to look back up. Several times that happened in Yugoslavia. Why would you go up and over it? Why would you do because that? Because the first wouldn't be low enough. Ah, so reverse being a lower gear still. A lower gear, and, and, and you could just about make it. Right. Is that a tip for people that if they ever wanted to get out of difficulty, always yeah. go in reverse? Yeah, yeah. But it's very difficult when you're trying to see back. Yeah. Were there occasions when you had to sleep aboard that vehicle? No, no. Uh, when uh, it was available, we uh, slept in hotels or homes. But we never had to sleep in the vehicle. Right. How many would be in your squad? I mean, how many? Two. That's all. You're Two. Seven. Um, and the, um, my officer. Right. And an interpreter. 
There are only two, two sexual parties covering Sicily. So you were number one. I was, I was very lucky to be picked. There was an interview when I was in uh, Treviso, in the north of Italy, just near near Venice, uh, when they decided to, uh, to uh, recover these bodies. I had an interview, and I had a, a smattering of Italian, and I was picked. So I was lucky. There were only two of us. So it was quite a privilege. Mm. Uh, how, what was it like towards the end, leaving the army, or how did you? They offered me promotion as I was being demobbed and I turned it down and I was home about three or four weeks and I decided to go back to rejoin. And I went back to rejoin and I was in the camp for three weeks and nothing had happened. Papers hadn't come through. I hadn't a penny to spend. I couldn't go down to the Navi and buy a bun or a cup of tea. So I left and went into London and I happened to have a, a rolly card at the time and I sold it uh, in Bond Street and I got £40 for it and I went to the Olympic Games 1948 in London mm-hmm. and I came home. But you hadn't, you you weren't, you didn't go AWOL because you hadn't... No, 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 I just, signed. I hadn't signed. And is that the time that I remember you telling me you cycled up to Fermanagh or something? Yes, yes, I, the girl I was with at the Olympic Games uh, lived in Fermanagh and when she came home, I cycled up to Fermanagh to see her. Mad. Mm. Mad. And hadn't been on a bike had I won sour arse. And the distance, like on the road, conditions of the roads. 130, 130 miles, yeah. 260 miles. Yeah, return. But it was quite a journey. I, uh, not so bad coming back. And I received a very poor reception from, from, our, from our family. They didn't even welcome me into the house. We had to stay out in the shed. Really? Yeah. Yes, they treated me very, was there, very badly. Were they? Why was that? Were they a different uh, religion? Or? The fact that I was from the Free State, I think. So that were they Rep- Protestant? Republican. Yes, they were Protestants. Mm. Yeah, they gave me very, very poor reception. I regret having uh, having left. If I had stayed, I'd have been pensioned at forty years of age. Now I'm 77 and I'm still working. 